Woods, chapter 25. The furniture goes up. Now the table, the big table, shouted Muggle Wump. Turn the table upside down and put a dollop of sticky glue onto the bottom of each leg. Then we shall stick that onto the ceiling as well. Hoisting the huge table upside down onto the ceiling was not an easy job, but they managed it in the end. Will it stay there? They cried. Is the glue strong enough to hold it up? It's the strongest glue in the world, Muggle Wump replied. It's a special bird catching, bird killing glue for smearing on trees. Please, said Roly Poly Bird, I have asked you before not to mention that subject. How would you like it if it was monkey pie they made every Wednesday and all your friends had been boiled up and I went on talking about it? I do beg your pardon, said Muggle Wump. I'm so excited, I hardly know what I'm saying. Now the chairs, do the same with the chairs. All the chairs must be stuck upside down to the ceiling and in their right places. Oh, do hurry up, everybody. Any moment now, those two filthy freaks are going to come rushing in with their guns. The monkeys, with their birds helping them, put glue on the bottom of each chair leg and hoisted them up to the ceiling. Now the smaller tables, shouted Mugglewump, and the big sofa, and the sideboard, and the lamps, and all the tiny little things, the ashtrays, the ornaments, and that beastly plastic gnome on the sideboard. Everything, absolutely everything, must be stuck to the ceiling. It was terribly hard work. It was especially difficult to stick everything onto the ceiling in exactly its right place. But they got it done in the end. What now? asked the roly-poly bird. He was out of breath and so tired he could hardly flap his wings. Now the pictures, cried Mugglewump. Turn all the pictures upside down and will one of you birds please fly out onto the road and watch to see when those frumptious freaks are coming back. I'll go, said the roly-poly bird. I'll sit on the telephone wires and keep guard. It'll give me a rest. The ravens swoop over. They had only just finished the job when the roly-poly bird came swooping in, screaming, They're coming back! They're coming back! Quickly, the birds flew back onto the roof of the house. The monkeys rushed into their cage and stood upside down, one on top of the other. A moment later, Mr. and Mrs. Twit came marching into the garden, each carrying a fearsome-looking gun. I'm glad to see those monkeys are still upside down, said Mr. Twit. They're too stupid to do anything else, said Mrs. Twit. Hey, look at all those cheeky birds still up there on the roof. Let's go inside and load our lovely new guns and then it'll be bang, 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 and bird pie for supper. Just as Mr. and Mrs. Twit were about to enter the house, two black ravens swooped below over their heads. Each bird carried a paintbrush in its claw, and each paintbrush was smeared with sticky glue. As the ravens whistled over, they brushed a streak of sticky glue onto the tops of Mr. and Mrs. Twit's heads. They did it with the lightest touch, but even so, the Twits both felt it. What was that? cried Mrs. Twit. Some beastly bird has dropped his dirty droppings on my head. On mine too, shouted Mr. Twit. I felt it. I felt it. Don't touch it, cried Mrs. Twit. You'll get it all over your hands. Come inside and we'll wash it off at the sink. The filthy, dirty brutes, yelled Mr. Twit. I'll bet they did it on purpose. Just wait till I've loaded up my gun. Mrs. Twit got the key from under the doormat where Mugglewump had carefully replaced it, and into the house they went. The Twits are turned upside down. What's this? gasped Mr. Twit as they entered the living room. What's happened? screamed Mrs. Twit. They stood in the middle of the room looking up. All the furniture, the big table, the chairs, the sofa, the lamps, the little side tables, the cabinet with bottles of beer in it, the ornaments, the electric heater, the carpet, everything was stuck upside down to the ceiling. The pictures were upside down on the walls, and the floor they were standing on was absolutely bare. What's more, it had been painted white to look like the ceiling. Look! screamed Mrs. Twit. That's the floor. The floor's up there. This is the ceiling. We're standing on the ceiling. 
We're upside down, gasped Mr. Twit. We must be upside down. We are standing on the ceiling, looking down at the floor. Oh, help, screamed Mrs. Twit. Help, help, help. I'm beginning to feel giddy. So am I, so am I, cried Mr. Twit. I don't like this one bit. We're upside down and all the blood's going to my head, screamed Mrs. Twit. If we don't do something quickly, I shall die. I know I will. I've got it, cried Mr. Twit. I know what we'll do. We'll stand on our heads, then anyway, we'll be the right way up. So they stood on their heads, and of course, the moment the tops of their heads touched the floor, the sticky glue that the ravens had brushed on a few moments before did its job. They were stuck. They were pinned down, cemented, glued, fixed to the floorboards. Through a crack in the door, the monkeys watched. They jumped right out of their cage the moment the twits had gone inside. And the roly-poly bird watched. And all the other birds flew in and out to catch a glimpse of this extraordinary sight. The monkeys escaped. That evening, Muggle Wump and his family went to, up to the big wood on top of the hill, and in the tallest tree of all, they built a marvelous tree house. All the birds, especially the big ones, the crows and rooks and magpies, made their nest around the tree house so that nobody could see it from the ground. You can't stay up here forever, you know, the roly-poly roly bird said. Why not? asked Muggle Wump. It's a lovely place. Just you wait till the winter comes, the roly-poly bird said. Monkeys don't like cold weather, do they? They most certainly don't, cried Mugglewump. Are the winters so very cold over here? It's all snow and ice, said the roly-poly bird. Sometimes it's so cold a bird will wake up in the morning with his feet frozen to the burrow that he's been roosting on. Then what shall we do, cried Mugglewump. My family will all be deep freeze. No, they won't, said Roly Poly Bird, because when the first leaves start falling from the trees in the autumn, you can all fly home to Africa with me. Don't be ridiculous, Mugglewump said. Monkeys can't fly. You can sit on my back, said the Roly Poly Bird. I shall take you one at a time. You will travel by the Roly Poly Superjet, and it won't cost you a penny. The Twits get the shrinks, and down here in the horrid house, Mr. and Mrs. Twit are still stuck upside down to the floor of the living room. It's all your fault, yelled Mr. Twit, thrashing his legs in the air. You're the one, you ugly old cow, who went hoping around shouting, we're upside down, we're upside down, and you're the one who said to stand on our heads so we'd be the right way up. You whiskery old warthog, screamed Mrs. Twit. Now, we'll never get free. You, we're struck. We're stuck here forever. You may be stuck here forever, said Mr. Twit, but not me. I'm going to get away. Mr. Twit wriggled and squirmed, and he squiggled and wormed, and he twisted and turned, and he choggled and turned, but the sticky glue held him to the floor just as tightly as it had once held the poor birds to the big dead tree. He was still as upside down as ever, standing on his head. But heads are not made to be stood upon. If you stand on your head for a very long time, a horrid thing happens, and this was where Mr. Twit got his biggest shock of all. With so much weight on it from up above, his head began to get squashed into his body. Quite soon, it had disappeared completely, sunk out of sight in the fatty fold of his flabby neck. I'm shrinking, burbled Mr. Twit. So am I, cried Mrs. Twit. Help me, save me, call a doctor, yelled Mr. Twit. I'm getting the dreaded shrinks. And so he was. Mrs. Twit was getting the dreaded shrinks too. And this time it wasn't a fake. It was the real thing. Their head shrank into their necks. Their necks began shrinking into their bodies, and their bodies began shrinking into their legs, and their legs began shrinking into their feet. And one week later, on a nice sunny afternoon, a man called Fred came around to read the gas meter. When nobody answered the door, Fred peeped into the house, and there he saw on the floor of the living room two bundles of old clothes, 
two pairs of shoes, and a walking stick. There was nothing more left in the world, left in this world of Mr. and Mrs. Twit, and everyone, including Fred, shouted, Hooray! The end. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what books you'd like for me to read next. Thank you for listening.